Hi everyone, this is a video about some of the most basic animation concepts in Blender. I think I'm going to call this video the nuts and bolts of Blender's animation system. Initially, I wanted to make a video about the non-linear animation editor or NLA, and I'm going to do that. It will be the next video, which I'll release very soon. However, I wanted to make it comprehensive, but also suitable for beginners. And I realized that I'll have to cover a few other areas first. And so this video became an overview of some of the basic concepts and tools that are related to animation in Blender. On that basis, I'm going to make the NLA video next. And I could also make videos about the other animation editors like Dope Sheet, Graph Editor and so on later on. So in this video, you'll get a basic understanding of transforms and other properties, keyframes, keyframe interpolation, actions, and the following editors, the timeline, dope sheet, graph editor, action editor, and of course the NLA. And most importantly, we'll learn how all of these are interconnected. If you like this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon or Gumroad. You can get 20% off of most of my Gumroad products if you enter coupon code CGDive. Okay, let's start and let's keep things simple and explain the main principles using a simple object. In future videos, we'll move to more complex examples, also with rigged characters, but instead of abusing a cube or Suzanne as usual, let's make a new cone here. But any object is fine, of course. So transforms. Transforms are values that show the position, orientation and size of an object in 3D space. You can view and manipulate these values here in the end panel under item transform and also in the properties panel under the object properties tab, again under transform. So these are the exact same values just displayed in two different parts of the interface. If I tweak the location value here, or here, the location of the object will change. Rotation changes the orientation of the object and scale will change its size. Of course, I can use the G, R and S shortcuts to manipulate the object right in the 3D view and that will automatically change these values here. And this is usually the most intuitive way to move stuff in your scene. Now we can talk about keyframes. Keyframes are basically snapshots of these values at a certain point of time. I will assume that you know what frames are. They are these units of time that we use in animation. Under the output tab, I can verify my frame rate and it is set to 30 FPS, which means that 30 frames is equal to one second of animation. Now, before I set any keyframes for an object, I can move, rotate and scale it any way I like and it will just stay in place until I move it again. And it doesn't matter at which frame I am at. But if we set a keyframe, then the keyframed values will be recorded and stored in the frame where we are cur currently at. There are many ways to set a keyframe. One of them is to press I in the 3D viewport and this menu will pop up. Another one is to move your mouse over the values that you want to keyframe and press I again. And now these values turned yellow, which means that they are keyframed. I'm going to undo that. And yet another way is to go to the object properties and then you can click on any of these dots next to any of the values. And that gives you even more control you can keyframe the value of just one axis, whereas the I key always keys the whole set of XYZ values. I'm going to undo all keyframes again. So let's keep things simple. I'm going to go to frame one, move, rotate and scale my object a little bit. And then I'll press I and simply choose location, rotation and scale. And that will set a keyframe for all of my transforms. And now these values here were recorded at frame one. If I now try to manipulate this object, move it and rotate it without setting another keyframe, and then I move the timeline, it will jump back to this position that I recorded. And I think that often confuses beginners 
when they accidentally insert a keyframe. So if your object keeps jumping back to a certain position or rotation, you probably have inserted a keyframe. But anyway, let's go to frame 30 now. Move, rotate and scale the object a little bit more and then insert another location, rotation and scale keyframe. As soon as we have two or more keyframes, we can now talk about keyframe interpolation. And that should be intuitive to understand. If I move the timeline from frame 1 to frame 30, my cone will smoothly transition from the first keyframe to the second one. Basically what happens is that the value of location x gradually moves from the number that is set on frame 1 to the number that is set on frame 30. Then location Y does the same, location Z does the same, rotation does the same, and scale does the same. And that creates this smooth motion that we see. Let's not complicate this with any more explanations. I think it's intuitive enough. I'll talk a little bit more about interpolation when we talk about curves later on. Okay, now we can introduce actions and that will lead to the NLA and the other editors. For that, I'll actually start over with a new scene. I'll create a new cone object again. And then I'll right click on this layout tab and choose duplicate. And I'll call my new tab animation editors. And I want to create my own layout for this presentation. So I'll move the timeline up split it into three sections and the middle one I'll split vertically and now the top one will remain the timeline this one I'll switch to the dop sheet this one graph editor and this one nonlinear animation and I'll switch this option to the action editor please bear with me for a second and I'll try to give you an overview of this mess that we created and now I'll set keyframes the same way that I did a minute ago. So I'll move, rotate and scale my object a little bit at frame one and insert a location, rotation and scale keyframe. And notice how as soon as I inserted the keyframe, something happened in the action editor and in the NLA as well. Basically a new action was created. Okay, I'll go to frame 30 and I'll again move, rotate and scale my object a bit and insert another keyframe. And now we have an action with two keyframes. Blender always needs an action to store the keyframes in. For very simple scenes, we can avoid bothering with the additional animation editors. We can just set our keyframes. Blender will create the action in the background and we don't even have to think about it. But when we try to achieve something more complex, then it's better to understand what is going on in all of these editors. So actions are needed for storing keyframes and we can have as many actions as we want. So I can create a new action, but before I do, I should press this shield icon here. This is a peculiarity of Blender that you have to understand and get used to, or you will end up pulling your hair out. Currently, this action, which is called cone action, is stored in the data of this object. You can see this in the outliner if I expand the data of the object. There is animation data and under it I'll find cone action. Since this action is attached to an object it is safe. It will be saved with the file. But if I press this X button that will unlink this action from this object. As you see it disappeared here. And now if I look at the list of actions, you'll see that this action is still here. It hasn't been deleted yet, but it has a zero next to it. That means that it is not being used by anything in the scene. So next time I save and reload this scene, Blender is going to clean this action. It's going to be gone forever. So if I choose this action again and click the shield icon and then unlink it, it will be gone from the object data but in the list of actions, it will appear with an F instead of a zero. F stands for fake user. Don't even ask why it is called fake user, but it means that your action is safe and it will be saved with your scene, even if it's not directly linked to a 3D object in the scene. 
but let's create another action now. I can simply add a new keyframe now and that will automatically create a new action or I can manually click new over here in the action editor that will create my new action. I can even rename it my new action and now any keyframes that I create from now on will be stored in this new action. So when you have an active action linked to this object, Blender will store any keyframes in it and if there is no action existing, Blender will automatically create an action because an action is always needed for storing keyframes. Now let's create a couple of keyframes for this object. One at frame zero. Sometimes the keyframes may not be visible in the editors. If you just middle click in the editor and drag down, it will appear. So basically the keyframe is up in the space of this editor. With middle click, I can move it down just like I move the scene using shift and middle click. But anyway, let's create another keyframe at frame 30, for example. And maybe another one at frame 50. And now we have this movement of the cone. And we also have two actions. At any point, I can activate any of the actions here. So I can switch to the first action and then back to the second action. It is useful to think of these individual actions as a special type of object or a container. Just like 3D objects, like this cone, contain mesh data in edit mode, mesh data like um, vertices and polygons. In a similar way, actions contain keyframes and curves. Actions can then be linked to objects in your 3D scene and animate their values. So if I create another object in the scene, like Suzanne, I can link any of these actions to my new object. And it will be using the same action, or in other words, the same animation. So the action is just data that attaches to objects in the scene. The action doesn't care if it's moving the cone or Suzanne or another object. It just cares that the object has transforms and it manipulates these transforms. I focused on transform values here because they are by far the most commonly animated object properties, but you can animate anything in Blender, like material colors, visibility, and so on and so on. Almost any property in Blender can be animated. So actions are not object specific. That's the point I wanted to make. So now I'm going to delete Suzanne and work with my cone again. So here I want to address something that may be throwing you off. We have the timeline, the action editor, which can also become a dope sheet, a shape key editor, and a bunch of other stuff. We have curves, and we have the NLA. You know, what is going on and do we need all of this stuff? And yeah, I think it may be overwhelming at first, but the more complex your project becomes, the more you'll appreciate having access to all of these different tools. Each of these editors deserves a special video for itself, but for now, here is a quick overview that I hope will help you organize things in your head a little bit. The timeline is meant as a way to preview the actions that you're working on. You know, you can play the action, you can scrub back and forth. The timeline has other useful features, like uh, you can set automatic keyframes and and here you can set how uh, automatic keyframes are set. In recent versions of Blender, the timeline was actually updated and it became a lot like a dope sheet. But let's keep things simple and for the sake of simplicity, let's say that the purpose of the timeline is to preview the animation. I'll switch this editor to Dope Sheet. The Dope Sheet and the Graph Editor are the most detailed representations of your action data. The Dope Sheet shows the data as just keyframes. The curves in the Graph Editor are a visual representation of the keyframe interpolation that we mentioned earlier. For example, this is the key for X location. 
if I adjust its handles and make the X location completely straight, then the object will be moving on the X axis at a constant speed. But if I tweak the line to create more of a curve shape, then I'm causing the movement on the X axis to have an ease in and ease out. Now I realized this example wasn't very clear and this really deserves its own video, so let's leave it at that. Experienced animators generally first block out the timing of their action in the dope sheet using keyframes and then they fine tune the action or the animation by using the curves. So now let's take a quick look at the action editor. And by the way, if you're new to this stuff, you can ignore all of the other modes of this menu except for dope sheet and action editor. All of the other modes just leave them for later. So the action editor also shows keyframes as you can see here, but it is a little bit more limited than the dope sheet. In the action editor, you'll mostly set your active action from the action list. You can rename your actions over here. You can save them, of course, with the shield icon. You can create new actions and unlink them. And another important function of the action editor is that it acts as a link to the NLA, to the Nonlinear Animation Editor. You can move your active action to the NLA editor using these two buttons, push down and stash. I'll explain exactly how they work in the next video about the NLA, but for now let's quickly push down this action and it will be unlinked from the active action and it will appear in the NLA. If I load my initial action now, you'll see that it takes over. And you'll also see it appear over here at the top of the NLA. I'll explain how this connection between the action editor and the NLA works. It is quite important. If you don't understand it, it can be frustrating. But for now, I'll just push down this second action to the NLA again. And now I have two actions in the NLA. One thing that I can do is to just line them up. So my cone will just perform the first action and then the second action. I can also create transitions between these actions so that when one action ends, the cone will first smoothly transition to the beginning of the next action and then the next action will begin. And another thing that I can do is to stack these actions one over the other and mix their features. And that is probably one of the most powerful ways to use the NLA. I'll explain how this works and give examples in the next video. I don't mean to tease you, but I just want to avoid repeating the same stuff over and over in two videos in a row. By the way, earlier I said that we can imagine actions as objects. And once we move an action in the NLA, it becomes very easy to imagine it as an object because it is this strip here that we have. That is the action. We can move them, rearrange them. We can make the action shorter or longer, and that will change the speed of the animation. So that's it. To recap, we have keyframes. Keyframes and the interpolation between them are stored in actions. The action can be previewed using the timeline. The keyframes of an action can be tweaked in the dope sheet and the curve editor. And finally, the action can be stored, renamed, or even deleted in the action editor. And from the action editor, we can move actions to the NLA, which allows us to work with multiple actions at the same time. We can play actions one after the other, we can combine them, we can organize them, and that can be very powerful. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and special thanks to my Gumroad and Patreon supporters. You can see their names on the screen now. Please click like and subscribe and talk to you soon.